Joe Winter car. Just got me to get a thing set up. Oops! You know, the bumper. I know. He's being bonky. Well, I want to keep this on. What happens is the screen will go dormant. Yeah, I think so. you got to undormant. That's the, you know, that's the problem with modern equipment, folks. You know, we have our, we don't have an iPad. We have a Motorola Zoom. So, <laughs> but, uh, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, this is old cam. And this is not a spring chicken today. We're going to continue our series for the Emmy Wraps. Or actually, this is our Emmy Screening Series. Emmy Screening Series. Uh, from therap.com. Yeah, and this is the last show in a series that we were able to attend because uh, we got in sort of late on the process. But we've attended every show that we possibly can. Last night was a history-breaking, uh, making show that we went to last night, though. Yes, La Reina del Sol. And the reason why this one was history is because? Okay, uh, basically it's, it was the first time that somebody, uh, uh, like uh, Telemundo, has made a push to get a primetime Emmy. Generally, what they do is uh, submitted for recognition by the International Emmys, mm -hmm. which is actually where they do belong. But uh, Because, I mean, I, I can make my political statement right now, folks. Uh, I watch German television, I watch Russian television, I watch Iranian television, I, <coughs> I watch Japanese, I watch Korean, I watch Chinese, and I watch Indian TV. All of those people produce good programming. I mean, mm -hmm. Korean television, you have to watch Korean soap operas, they are magnificent. So, uh, they, they wanting, they figured, they said that was 17% of our population is a Latino, and they basically feel that the programming for the networks are missing an opportunity and this show uh, is basically their chance to show the American public who doesn't watch Latin television how good a show can be, which it is. It was a, it it really was a good show. I mean, I'm, I'm going to give you a comparison. It is a one, one camera high def shoot that basically is so god awful superior to men of a certain age you wouldn't believe it, which is also a one camera mm -hmm. high def show. That is the difference. When you actually want something to look beautiful and lavish, you don't go to Americans anymore. <laughs> you go to well, you know, here's one of the things. This, this is Latin. This is why I happen to be wearing these colors. One is because this turquoise color is it's the closest swimsuit I have to the shoes, shoes which, that she was wearing. Which last night, you know, um, you know, Kate Dan Castillo was wearing. She made a point of telling me, I'm wearing the shoes. Mm -hmm. Which means she walked off from the show with the folks. That's, that's what happens when you're a big enough star. And she really is a big star. I mean, this woman, she's a big enough Latin star. She's been on American television series as a, as a regular guest star. So. Which is a big, yeah. Yeah, and her father was a huge, I mean, I checked. Her father, uh, you know, I think like 263 different shows. That's 263 not, different shows? Different shows since 1960. No, I mean her and her mother is a big her mother. I know her name. Her full name actually is Kate de Castillo Trillo. She's got her name. She's been named after. She took her mother's bottom name. Is it Trujillo, like uh, Danny Trujillo? Trujillo. Yeah. T R U T I L L O. T R I L L O. Oh, okay, it's different. Then. But um, you know, she took her fa mother's name because her father's name wasn't doing her a whole lot of good. As she can explain why Daddy's name wasn't doing her much good. Why was that? Uh, well, because she's female? No, well, partly because she's female, but uh, she had a, a bit of a career problem. She started out when she was six years old. Actually, she said nine. I checked the IMDb and it said six. You know what? One of the things is um, they do this the screens and you watch the, sh the show. This happened to be the first one. Yeah, the first episode. Is this the first? It was the first one ever? That was the first, first show. The first show that they did was the one we saw. They basically were presenting that for best show. I mean, they're, they're going after best show, best actress, the, the whole works they're putting this one up for. We had popcorn and soda pop last night. I know, that was nice. That means it shows you how much they thought of the show was well, popcorn. What is the other Emmy screening series um, didn't have popcorn and soda, and you're thinking, well, what difference does that make? Well, you know what? It makes a difference. When the other ones don't have any, and this one does, it doesn't. It does make a difference because a lot of the people that went to the show are Emmy members. I mean, there are people to vote on it, and we heard gross. And they were expecting popcorn and soda for all of the shows. Yeah, because we were actually downstairs. We were seeing for another one of the Emmy screeners was being done. They were downstairs in the lobby handing out coupons for all mm -hmm. this stuff. So, uh, but the trick is, is that... 
Telemundo basically is a division of Universal Comcast, and we do know the people over at Comcast basically know how to treat people. Mm -hmm. We have been to Comcast parties. Oh, they really know how to treat people. Mm -hmm. So the same with something simple like popcorn and drinks. It really is what you expect when you go sit in a movie theater and watch something. It's popcorn and drinks, not costly, mm -hmm. but you, you expect it. And um, but she, like we'll get back to Miss Castillo, because you know, but. Uh, Oh, what they do, what they do is they show the screener, right, and then at the end they have a Q and A. Yeah, which so was an extensive Q and A, a lot, the longer Q and A than I've really seen. I mean, these people that we've talked to are not, they're not little people. These are every night has been somebody major in the broadcast industry. Mm -hmm. She just happened to be a major thing also in the motion picture industry, mm -hmm. which is our first major move. And she is a major star. She is the. Um, she is the star of the highest grossing Spanish movie ever shown in the United States also. Mm -hmm. And she's, I mean, her cat, I mean, the people that she's co-starred with in feature films in our country, I mean, there's a long list of major Academy Award winners. So she's not, this was a, a big cue. I'm watching her, she's behind me, and she's, uh, she's, she's walking like this, watching, this, watching what's going on, pacing back and forth, you know, like she's nervous about, because she knows this is um, this is her chance to talk to people about like to get to, to get their vote to get their vote and mm -hmm. um, and she did shine it on she had she, she did stuff. she was pretty charming though I have to yeah say. well she's all wound up about what she's doing you know, she said she read this uh, the book that this was written on you know it was written you know she read it a decade ago and she you know like she's I think what she said at the time I was born for this role. She is. She's, she's extremely athletic. She does her own stunts. Even telling us about how she did a stunt when they said, "You're crazy," you know. Uh, she got like she's in. A, she's in. A, they got a, a thing with her being chased by the police <laughs> in a speedboat, and she's doing the stunt driving. Mm -hmm. And she didn't realize how difficult it was. And she says, "I got two people behind me that are depending on me." And and remember, this is a soap opera. They're shooting daily. They're working 18 to 20 hour days. So this is not. They're burnt out. Um, yeah. Because uh, we could tell, I mean, I could tell, I pointed out to her a few minutes ago, there were no people to do soap operas for a living in the audience last night because they were amazed that the normal telenovela is a one-day shoot for every episode. That's what they do for soap operas. Mm -hmm. and what it is, a telenovela is a condensed soap opera. I mean, some of them last as long as a full year. But, but they have long shoot days, because even for a shoot day in the United States is what, about 10 to 14 at, at hours? At maximum 14 hours, and basically you're paying overtime after like 12. Yeah, but they're talking about 18 to 20 hour days. And here's one thing, and I don't, and I don't watch a lot of Spanish um, telenovelas, so... Well, I have, so... Okay. It's one of the things I noticed is she was the central character. It's not like on a typical soap opera, there's quite a few main characters. She was the character. Yeah, I mean, it's totally focused on, I mean, it's focused on her. I mean, we're talking, she couldn't be like an ounce in different weight from the beginning mm -hmm. to the end of the show, you know, so, um, and because you could see, okay, they didn't do some production errors in it that I saw, which is basically because of the necessity of filming. She was wearing the same underwear in a lot of the shots. It's all shot in one day? All shot in one day, all, even though they were took over a span of like six years, one of the things. One of the was six years, and she's got exactly the same underwear on she had <laughs> earlier. Exactly the same. Well, because you got to see a lot of underwear. It is called a very sexy show. The telenovelas are not like. Uh, uh, but, well, she, here's what the, what she thought was funny. As sexy as what well, they did have, you know, the naked sign up on it. She said they got censored over her kissing another woman in the United States. Oh, really? Yeah. They went. They, they, the censor thing came from kissing another woman. Really? Yeah. Which I don't think anybody, you know, anymore. You got guys kissing guys other than Fox Broadcasting. I don't know. What Who kind of kiss was that? I have no idea. It might have been how she was dressed when she was doing it too. Mm -hmm. But that got censored. But it's a it's a hot and sexy show, very athletic show. Yeah. Which is probably why they picked her because I mean she is you know, she is a very well put together, healthy young lady. Mm -hmm. I mean she's got you can see the muscles on her. Well, and part of it is this one is about drug trafficking in Mexico, and they shot it on location. I think they said they shot 95% of it on location. Uh, yeah, 95, and generally it's not done that way. I think no. what they said is like a 40% thing. 50-50. Yeah, 50-50. Yeah. Yeah. They shot it in Mexico, Colombia, and, and Spain. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I mean, you can tell. Okay, I've noticed one thing about the telenovelas versus our soap operas is that they do make an effort to make it look god awful expensive. I mean, it may only be one camera, but it's what they do. Okay, they did point out last night that the, most of the best directors in the world are coming out of Mexico. The cinematographers are coming. Look at Benito del Toro. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, and uh, uh, it, it's just, uh, you know, uh, you know and look at the other, you know, a lot of people, you know. Oh, look at, you look at Hellboy. Roberto Rodriguez. Yeah. Well, a lot of them are actually here in town for the L.A. Film well, Festival. Yeah, they're all here. I mean, Rodriguez is here at the mm -hmm. moment. A lot of them are here, but uh, actually, we, I saw a lot of well-known Latin people, actors in the back of the, in the room watching. I mean, in, for all practical purposes, it was so packed that we were in the we were in theater number one, which was the big theater, and there were people standing alongside, which is actually no-nos, but they were... They're watching. Yeah, you know, and um, and we saw some people there that I worked with. Mm -hmm. and they're not, okay, they're not, I know they were wearing two pages because they didn't, they had hair that looked like that 50 years ago, the same piled on the top of their head, and it's the same color. Uh, yeah, but uh, one of the, the things there besides her, there were two other gentlemen. One gentleman was from Telemundo, and the other gentleman was uh, the the National. Kia Mas, the Kia, I, I actually didn't uh, get Kia, the names uh, down. That um, was a Kia uh, National Hispanic Coalition. Yeah, that's what that was. So. But uh, they're the ones that are pushing. Um, they're they're. Uh, what I find amazing is the guy had never seen the show until this was the first time he saw the show that he's pushing. Oh, really? I that's thought that was sort of amazing that. He is making an all-out push to get an Emmy nomination. Don't get an Emmy nomination simply because it's uh, NBC Comcast on Telemundo. Mm -hmm. And they're putting their weight behind this show. But it also means that one of the shows that they have, that they're, most of the shows they're going to get nominations for are their cable shows. Mm -hmm. So what it means is one of their favorite cable shows is not going to get a nomination this year, so this one can. Yeah. One of the things that they did say was that the numbers our numbers are similar to that of the network for this show. Yeah, that's uh, it is because it is uh, it, it 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 is really a, um, it is a visually beautiful show, and the acting uh, the acting is okay. The men overact, really overact. I mean, I can tell you one thing: the difference between a Mex uh, a film done in Mexico and a film done in the United States. Is guys in the United States don't walk around with shoulder holsters and guns stuck in their belts, mm -hmm. and they don't, you know, that that would they don't actually do it in Mexico either. But it looks good. Every I think every single in every, I've never seen a telenovela where the guys weren't carrying heavy weaponry walking down the street. So it's just they it's it, it, what it is is they have um, I worked on motion pictures. I mean. Um, I did stuff with you know Roy Rogers, Gene Autry, and other people. Well, people don't know who Jimmy Wicky is, or Eddie Dean. But uh, uh, people in other countries had this weird idea because they were doing things set during World War II and times like that after World War II that there was actually cowboys and Indians on horse, and they were wagon trains, you know, because they thought that people actually were doing that in the 1940s. No, that was a movie. The same thing, you don't see guys with submachine guns walking down streets. You don't see heavy gunfire. Yeah, but maybe in Mexico they do that. I've been to Mexico City. They don't walk down the streets with uh, with heavy armament because that, that, that because police have sharpshooters, they probably would just shoot you without giving. Mexican police are not nice people. Mm -hmm. So. But uh, that, that, but that's the thing that they always do because it's a, it's a throwback. They, basically, a lot of what they're doing is copycatting the American film industry at certain levels in our time history. They're trying to make it look like—I mean, I've seen it. They have the kettles riding their horses in their in their outfits with a six shooter on in the 21st century. Uh, they're not fighting Indians in the 21st century. Not they're not fighting Yankees on the streets of uh, you know of of, of of you know. You know, uh, uh, Acapulco. But it, they do it because we did it in the United States in the 30s and 40s. Their their storylines are comparable to what we were doing. They are behind us in a lot of areas. Technology, they're ahead a little bit. One of the things um, they were they really wanted to emphasize is this was 100% fiction. Yeah. This does not relate. Because they don't want to get involved with no. the Mexican mafia. Which 
Yeah, I couldn't blame them for that. Yeah. All right, so 100% fiction. Also, she involuntarily gets involved into drug trafficking. Yeah, and you know, and, but she, and I love it that, uh, you know, she is the, she, the Democrats will love this story. She yeah. is the true victim. She's a drug trafficker, the queen of the drug trafficker, and she's a cold-blooded killer, but she's actually the victim. Mm -hmm. Well, and, they did create a sympathetic character. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I mean, well, they, they, she gets raped a lot, so, you know, <laughs> so sympathetically mm -hmm. as she blows a guy. You know, only in a, only in a television or movie can you shoot a guy in the head with a forty-five caliber pistol and he gets up complaining about Yeah, I was I was kinda of wondering about that one because I mean But blown his head off. I mean he she literally was like yeah, boom, like he boom. was on top of her and she literally had the gun here, shot him and was like yeah. hmm. and you can also see how the show was shot in bald eye levels because let's put it this way, she didn't have any underwear on when she gets up to run away. Um, and conveniently fired.